Hey guys, I'm Bashan and this is SoCal Expeditions. Today's video we're going to do a full walk around of my daily driver, my off-road rig. And that's my 2018 Ram 2500 6.7 liter Cummins. For the front bumper, I'm running a Thurin Fab plate style bumper. This is uh, one of the lightest options on the market, 40, 45 pounds more than stock. So it's not much of a weight increase, which is something that I was looking forward to because the nose of this truck is already super heavy, having the Cummins motor in the front. So in the center section, I have a 30 inch Baja Designs Onyx 6 light bar, super bright, pretty much can see everything that I need to. And to fill up that top chin section of the Thurn bumper, I added these four knockoff LP6 style lights. They have daytime running lights, they look great, and they do function really, really well. And I made a separate video covering these lights so you could check it out yourself in the future. Moving on to the wheel and tire combo on this truck, I got the Method MR315s. It's a 17 by eight and a half wheel, and it's a plus zero offset and four and three quarters backspacing. I think that this compared to the AEV Saltas that I've ran in the past look a heck of a lot better. I can finally turn my new Nitto Ridge Grappler 37 by 13 and a half 17 inch tires lock to lock without hitting my radius arms. The stance looks good and I think that it's something that was easy for me to fit with just a little bit of cutting and a lot of people stray away from doing plus zero offset or four and a three quarter inch backspacing because it's so much work. I gotta be honest, it was pretty easy fitting these things coming from the Tacoma world where you have to cut absolutely everything to fit a 35. So I got the widest 37 on this truck, easy peasy, uh, just a little bit of trimming and it's good to go. On the driver's side, as well as passenger side, I have my IRF sliders, Iron Rhino Fabrications. And these are some custom bolt-on sliders that sandwich the frame. We're all using grade 10 hardware, so these things are not breaking at all, even if I slam them down on a rock. They serve as a step, they serve as a slider, and they have kickouts towards the rear, which makes it super easy to jump into the bed. This is a tall truck, so I wanted sliders to be able to get in and out easier, and I'm also gonna have a camper in the future, and I need to be able to get to the roof of that camper, and these sliders most definitely help. And we stayed away from welding on this frame just because I know that these frames are heat treated. So bolt-on was the best option and Iron Rhino Fabrications absolutely killed it. These sliders look amazing and I love using them every single day that I jump into the truck. The headlights that I have on my truck are the Morimoto XB Gen 2 headlights. These things are in the amber daytime running light and they look absolutely fantastic on the truck. I think dark trucks with those amber daytime running lights looks absolutely killer and I wouldn't have it any other way. Light output is great, and these things have the sequential turn signal, which is something that I wanted in my headlights. Looking at my taillights, I have the Morimoto Gen 2 XB 5th Gen style LED taillights in this red color. Now, there are some quality control issues and fitment issues with these things, but I can't say that they don't look awesome, and the LEDs are extremely bright. Even at night, it's pretty much impossible to not see your brake lights Coming from the Alpha Rex lights that I had previously, these were a huge upgrade and I'm super stoked to have them on my truck. Now, I've spent the most amount of money on the suspension on this thing. And the entire suspension platform is based around the Carly Pintop three and a quarter inch lift, which comes with King 2.5s and Carly's springs. So I've thrown the Carly catalog at this thing. It has the Carly low mount steering stabilizer and the high mount steering stabilizer. It has the Carly sway bar, which made one of the biggest improvements in stopping that rocking and side to side motion 
when you're going over dips in these 2500 and 3500 trucks. I also have the Carly track bar in the front as well. Looking in through the fender well on the side, you'll see the Carly spec King 2.5 shocks with the Carly springs in the front. And these are the springs that came in the pin top package. Moving on to the rear, I again have the Carly King 2.5 spec out shocks, spec and valved by Carly with stainless steel shafts. But I switched the springs to the Carly R2 springs which are meant to hold 700 pounds in the bed consistent at all times and stay at level or above level in terms of rake. And I purposely switched these out to the R2 springs because I will be putting about 700 pounds in the bed and these were just the best way to go for me. And even unloaded, this thing rides fantastic for what it is. So I have a lighter truck than most, not being a quad cab, being a single cab, and it still rides fantastic. You'll also notice that I have front and rear arms, I should call it. So I have the Carly radius arms in the front with the drop bracket that they offer. These things look awesome, pure beef, and I can finally clear them with a the proper spec wheel. And I always love looking at it up through the side of my truck. And then in the rear, I have the prototype Thurn base kit. It's a rear arm kit that's gonna fix the OE geometry. It's gonna stop axle hop, which it most definitely does in those sand, silt, and snowy conditions. If you've ever mashed the gas pedal in your 2500, you've probably noticed that axle hopping. Well, this kit completely fixes that, and I can attest to it. Even driving off of red lights now, there is no more axle hop. So it's super nice to have a truck that feels planted to the ground. And I also added the Thurin rear track bar to go along with the entire kit to tie everything together. And the rear track bar helped eliminate the wag that my 2500 was experiencing. That's that side to side rocking motion. So I don't really have that anymore. This truck feels planted and it almost feels like it's a leaf sprung truck now. On the passenger side, I have my AEV raised air intake. Main purpose of this is to move where the air is being sucked into the fender to up above, uh, pretty much at roof level and it's gonna be a lot cleaner air right there. So this isn't meant to go underwater. This truck does not get submerged in six feet of water and it's just pointless for me to do something like that and destroy the truck. So the only purpose of this snorkel is just to get cleaner air from up above the dirt and dust level line and it most definitely does that. It is a raised air intake and it's not fully water sealed and dust sealed. So there is air getting in from other little areas that it can. I mean, there's a hole in the intake box too, but the AEV raised air intake looks pretty damn good on the truck and I think it really ties it all together. Getting into the interior of this truck, I decided to add some Clasio synthetic leather seat covers. I've had them in my past vehicles and they always fit snug and they look pretty much like an OEM seat should if it was wrapped in leather. I've had a lot of people who've seen it and been like, whoa, nice leather seats. And I tell them it's seat covers and they're pretty surprised. So the Clasio seat covers look fantastic in here. I also went and added steering wheel controls to the truck and I upgraded the head unit with a hundred and forty something dollar AliExpress CarPlay head unit that just fit together really well, uh, plug and play and I have my OEM reverse backup camera and all my stereo functions work, my steering wheel controls work. So this is just a little cheap upgrade to make the truck look better interior wise. And right when you open the door to my driver's side, you'll see my Vo switch panel on the bottom left. I added a switch panel on here because I have tons of auxiliary lighting and I wanted to be able to just switch them on one by one and I wanted the panel to be out of the sun and out of the way and this was the perfect spot for it. I chose the Vo switch because it was cheap and I'm on a budget and I spent way too much money on suspension. I don't need a switch pros, I just wanted something that's going to turn lights on and turn lights off. And this does exactly that, gives me the option for strobe functions and everything else that I need and it's more than enough, it's just a switch panel, there's no need for me to spend $900 on one or even more. Coming from a Tacoma, I knew that I wanted a full size diesel truck and I wanted it to be the shortest that it could possibly be with the biggest bed. So it just made sense for me to buy this single cab long bed. And I don't have a wife and I don't have kids and I don't have dogs. So my girlfriend and I fit just fine in the front three seats. There's storage behind my seats if I wanna put anything in there and it's been more than enough. And if I can't fit it in the cab, I have an eight foot long bed that I could fit pretty much everything that I want inside of. 
by buying a single cab, I was able to save probably $10,000 or more when comparing a single cab to a quad cab in the same Cummins configuration, whether it be a Tradesman, a Bighorn, or a Longhorn. I was able to save a ton of money by buying this truck. That's a full look around my 2018 Ram 2500 6.7 liter Cummins truck. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you enjoyed, I just recommend you give this video a thumbs up and that's it. Take care. I'll see you guys in the next one and keep on camping.